Bayless's interest in Mexican cuisine goes way beyond simply cashing in on the southwestern cooking craze. He studied the culture extensively, cooked the food authentically, and packs them in at Frontera Grill. His shrimp entree shows why he was selected Chef of the Year by the Beard Society in 1995. Garlic is one of those flavors that just runs through almost all of Mexican food and in fact when you're talking about dishes that are based on seafood, garlic really plays a, a major, major role. In fact, there's a whole class of dishes that are called mojo de ajo, which means bath of garlic. It's something that the Spaniards brought with them when they came from Spain to Mexico back some 500 years ago. And what I've got in a skillet here is the base of that mojo de ajo of any mojo de ajo. It's olive oil and garlic cut in, garlic is cut into sort of small dice and it cooks very, very slowly, just bubbling and bubbling, but not really frying for about a half an hour or so until that garlic gets really sweet. Now let me show you what you do with the garlic. It takes a whole head of garlic to make enough for four people. That may sound like an outrageous amount, but once this garlic is slowly cooked with the olive oil for that long of a time, it really loses its pungency. We just slice the garlic up and cut it across, and you'll see the pea, it's not, this isn't a real fine mince. Then I'll just put my knife through it a couple of times to kind of cut it a bit smaller than what I started with. And that's the size dice we start with with the garlic. And you can see that this has been cooking now for long enough that it's really turned a beautiful golden color. But if you touch those pieces of garlic, you'll notice that they're soft. They're not crispy in the least. Now, what we're going to do with the mojo de ajo, at this point it could be just used as a bath right over a little bit of salt, maybe a touch of lime juice, and it's a perfect accompaniment to a grilled piece of fish. But we're going to do a variation on it called a mojo dulce. In mojo dulce, instead of lime juice, we're going to put in some red wine. And instead of some of the other ingredients that you might see, like little strips of very hot red chili that some cooks put. We're going to put a sweet chili ancho. I'll come back to this in a minute and tell you exactly how we treated that. And some grill, green onions that have been chopped up just to give some beautiful color and balance of flavor. And about half, about two thirds, about a third of a cup, we've got two thirds total here, of sliced prunes are going to go into this mixture. Now this has been cooking for quite some time over a very low heat, but I'm going to raise the heat to about uh, high now and let it continue to cook until, I'm going to stir it just to mix it all up nicely, until we hear it start to sizzle. That will mean that all of that red wine has evaporated from it. Now let's go back to the chili ancho, that sweet chili that I was talking about before. It's a fairly soft and pliable dark red color. It's very easy to work with. You simply, and these are available in any Mexican market for sure, simply pull out the stem, open it up, and dump out the seeds. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with working with chilies, it might seem like a kind of an unusual procedure to go through all of this, but there are some veins that are in here, and if you want to ensure that the dish is not very hot, then you pull out those sort of pieces of vein. They're not very clearly distinguishable in here, but they do run down these ridges all through here, and you can pull those out, and all the capsaicin, in the hot part of the chili, is very much concentrated in that part, not so much in the seeds as we've been told for quite some time. Then after it's been cleaned, roll it up and with a very sharp knife, because they have very tough skin, slice it across, and that's the chili ancho that goes into seasoning this. Now apart from that, we have some pecans, and these we don't only want to break up a little bit with our hands, don't use any kind of machine on them. You don't even have to use a knife because they do break up really easily and very, very well. In go the pecans. We'll let those 
toast in that hot oil until they become aromatic. It'll take a sort of generous half teaspoon of salt to salt all of this. See what a delicious looking mixture that is. And at the very last second here, boy, I'm getting a whiff of those pecans now. We'll put in the remainder of the prunes. We didn't want those, the other half of them to get too soft. And that's our, looks sort of like a chunky salsa consistency, but it's ready now to use for our final dish. We have some peeled and deveined shrimp. We'll just go right into this skillet. I've seasoned them with salt and pepper already. And I like to use a little of the oil from the mojo de ajo, if you will. Get them all flat there. The mojo de the oil from the mojo de ajo will give them a nice garlicky flavor. And keep in mind always that that garlic that's in there has been so slowly cooked that it's going to be very sweet. You can see how pretty those sh shrimp have that have been. We've slit them just a little bit as we're taking the vein out of them so that they'll open up butterfly and they'll look big and lively on the plate. Now when those, they don't take too long to cook and in fact I'm one that doesn't like my shrimp to be too cooked because it seems like it just gets rubbery. So we'll, I'm standing them up so that I can finish the cooking. And now with the flyer way down, I'm going to spoon in some of our mojo dulce to heat that up. And a little of the oil to go with it. I'm going to put a mold of simple Mexican style white rice, the pilaf style. It's made by first sauteing the raw grains of rice and then simmering it with some broth and some salt. Now we'll line the shrimp up around our mold of white rice and then lastly spoon over our toasted garlic with all the, all the goodies in it. Now I think you'll notice when you're tasting this dish that the flavor of that garlic with the red wine and the all those delightful goodies. It's really, really nice because of the underlying sweetness of everything practically that goes into the dish. You can see the colors of the grilled green onions. And now just the final little drizzle of that delicious olive oil.